Alrighty there, planner friends. This is Heather, also known as Fandom Planner, and today I'm coming at you with a tutorial on how to make vinyl dashboards or dividers. Now, this is going to be a little bit of a longer tutorial because there are a couple of pieces. We're going to start off with the basics of making just a dashboard and then adding on how to make them dividers by adding on tabs, which you can either add on before or you can add into your design. So the program that I'm using is Silhouette Studio. This is the business edition, which is the highest edition that you can use when um, upgrading Silhouette. I use this because I use multiple machines and I apologize if you have a basic version of Silhouette and can't do certain things, but just a forewarning. So what you're going to do is um, whatever design that you're wanting to do for these vinyl see-through dividers and dashboards, you're going to need to at least pre-design um, an image to use. Um, I use Photoshop for my designs. Um, a lot of people have seen them online. Uh, this is the Kingdom Hearts design here that I created. This is the base file. Here are some images that I used to make the bookmark. Um, this one was a custom that I just made for someone else. I uh, created this moon and star design here are some base images i use the star to create the tabs on the top um, also using these base images to create the designs within these bookmarks so um i'm gonna use something that i designed already and we're gonna go into a blank thing make sure that your page setup is currently either 12 by 12 or 12 by 24 depending on how many pieces in the size of the planner that you're going to be using and designing for so i'm gonna go in here we are going to open and so you're gonna go into your uh computer files and figure out where you saved um your design that you're going to be working on. Let me see where I saved mine. Did I save it in planner shit? Yes, I will probably cuss. Um, let's see, Kingdom Hearts banner. All right, so um, I did recently did this Mickey Hart um, design for some friends who love Disney. And we're gonna work with this one. So you saw it dark because I have a dark theme on my computer, but it is a PNG. I suggest creating these in PNGs because they have transparent backgrounds. That way you're not dealing with a random white block around this. It makes tracing things a lot easier. So here's the design with the Mickey and the hearts. So what you're going to do first, this is an image. It's not cuttable. So you're going to go in and do your trace tool up here and trace the area. This is a good setting here. Sometimes I do increase it just a little bit, uh, depending on what I see there. And then we're just going to trace. What you're gonna do is remove the darker image because we're not really gonna need that, but we're gonna use this image here. So we don't need that just yet. Um, we're gonna figure out what size planner we're gonna be using um, just for demonstration purposes. Since I have a personal planner, I'm gonna go ahead and use that. Whereas, um, this is for my Aura Estelle cloud planner, which is why it's so large and why I had to use a larger canvas for my vinyl cutting. So I'm going to take that. Um, actually, I'm going to switch back to the click tool here and I'm going to do control X and we're going to put it back onto this blank canvas here. I don't really need that. So we're going to say no. So we're going to use this at some point. So I just take it off of my canvas here. This is the vinyl. We'll be using so as i said um we'll go into personal i'm gonna make a personal size so you're gonna want to do this box you're more than welcome to do rounded corners if you like um i like just regular rectangle so you just draw a rectangle obviously those are not the dimensions of personal planner so i'm gonna go here and unclick the uh, little lock here so i can get the dimensions correctly the width of personal planners are 3.75 by four um uh, by 6.75 and you just hit enter and it'll go to the correct size. I go back and I lock that. That is our base image. So this is the outside outline. Now you've seen these, these have frames. Well, what you're gonna do is go into your offset tool. So it's gonna open the offset panel over here. 
Let me move it a little bit closer. What we're gonna do is not do the traditional outline offset. We're gonna do an internal offset. So make sure that you click internal offset and make sure that if you are using these straight corners, that you make sure that your straight corners are done. If you're using rounded corners, make sure you're choosing the rounded corners. So from here, um, as far as distance goes, I kind of play with this wherever it looks good for you. You can kind of make it thicker, you can make it thinner. I prefer somewhere kind of right in the middle. We're gonna hit apply. Now this creates two separate pieces in your design. If you're making a dashboard, this is great. And you don't need to group these just yet. If you're gonna make dividers, which I'll show you how to do here in a second, I'm gonna select these, hit control D, and it's gonna duplicate our design, but I'm gonna leave it off to the side. So if you're just making a straight dashboard, you're gonna leave these pieces here, and then you're gonna bring in whatever design you're using. So here, I'm just gonna dupli duplicate this again, just hitting Control D. Now this was originally sized for an A6 planner, um, so we will have to resize them, but they will retain the dimensions. So I'm gonna drop that one over here because I'll show you how to import this in. Now, this is an important key, um, especially when we get into doing uh, dividers, is that you don't group all these together before welding. And I'll show you kind of what, what that means because you'll lose your design in here. So I'm gonna zoom in just a little bit so I can see a little bit better um, because I will be um, erasing a couple of things to join these center pieces. So what we're gonna do is just resize in here a little bit if I can click it, we're gonna go ahead and get a little bit in here. So I like to leave a little bit over the sides. Um, so you're still seeing, you know, like you don't want to get like over these lines here. Um, you might want to bring it in just a little bit more and then select both this and the center piece. We're going to go to our alignment tools and we are going to do center that way that's there. Um, and then you can choose how high or how low you want this to be, which I probably shouldn't have centered it until I found what space I wanted to put it at. So we're gonna leave it a little bit from the top. So I'm just gonna go back in here and make sure everything's center, that center alignment, great. So you wanna deselect. Now here we're gonna get in a little bit closer and we're gonna choose the eraser tool and we wanna make sure that it is the outline tool. Make sure that your brush is an easy to use size um, and just erase these overlapping cut lines because we want these to be connected. So that's pretty decent. It's okay if you have a little bit of some overlap um, in there, it's not really gonna affect your cuts. Um, just make sure they're not really, really long. We're gonna do the same thing on the other side and just make sure that when you are doing this, if you have to zoom in closer, that's great. Um, just make sure you don't lose these kind of connection lines anywhere um, when you're doing this. So we're good there. We're gonna go back to our selection tool so that we're not erasing anything else. We are going to zoom back out. And that is your final project. So what you're gonna do here, now that we're ready for this to be one whole item, we're going to control G, which is going to group. You can also group by right clicking and then clicking the group button here. So this is if you're just gonna make dashboards and you're gonna put vellum underneath it. This is like the front of your planner. If you wanna make a really nice page lifter, this is a good option. But what if you wanna make dividers? So that's a whole kind of different process that's still a little similar. So I'm gonna move this off to the side because we don't need it just yet. We're gonna scroll over here real quick and we're gonna select this first piece that we had here. And actually I'm gonna put it back over there and we're actually just gonna take this outside piece because this is where we're gonna add our tabs. So as you can see, it's just an outline and you can figure out if you wanna do words, you can do top tabs, you can do side tabs. Um, let's see what I want to do. So for like my kingdom heart dividers, I use this crown image as my basis for my tabs. But since this one's just Disney, um, I'm going to go in, let's see, actually I might do it and do this heart. So I'm going to go into the specialty tools over here. This is a specialty, um, shape cut and I'm just going to 
draw it out till it's pretty decent. We're going to go and grab this. I'm going to rotate it to the side. Now you have these really fun anchor points. You can choose whether to make it bigger. You can make it smaller. You can, you know, play around with it to what you like. So we're going to do a heart or at least get somewhat of a heart look here. So you have to figure out how many dividers you want to use. Um, depending on my planner, I use anywhere between four to six. Um, my Baby Yoda uses six. My Anime Design uses six. My Kingdom Hearts is six as well, just because I currently use six sections in my planner. So you're going to want to have whatever heart design you want, and you're going to duplicate this however many times that you need for your dividers. So the easiest way to duplicate is you can right click and duplicate, or you can do control D because I love my hotkeys. Let's see. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, six. All right. So we have six. I would say that first one, make sure that you position it where you want it and then take the last one that you've designed and you're going to move it kind of sort of towards the bottom um, where not too much is hanging off the side over here. It's okay if a little bit does. Um, it's just kind of personal preference. And you're going to hold down shift and you're going to highlight all the other hearts. Now from here, in order to get the correct spacing for our dividers, we're going to go back to the alignment tool again and we're actually going to align it left and then we're going to space things vertically. That's going to space out your tabs for however many um, designs and how many dividers you need like that. All right, so that's set. But we're going to need five more of these. So what we're going to do is the same thing. Make sure it's highlighted. You're going to control D um, five more times to get those six dividers. One, two, three, four, five. I'm going to go ahead and select all of them. We are going to align back on the left. And so you essentially have those six pieces on top of each other. So now we're going to weld the dividers together in each piece. So what you're going to do is select whatever the top layer of the uh, main outline is, and you're going to hold shift and click that first heart. From there, you're going to right click and hit weld. So as you can see, it created this little heart shape. And if we had this little square box over here in the center, it would have removed it. So make sure that you're working in these pieces on their own. So we've created our first divider. We can move it right over here. As you can see, I don't really need that anymore. You can see that we've got a little lip here. Now, depending on how big of your stickers are for your, um, if you're going to like put a sticker down with the tab uh, title on it, or if you're going to write it in, you can kind of pick and choose how big you want this. Um, I wouldn't go super far because you don't want it necessarily hang out of your planner. I would just make sure that you have a ruler around and measure your inserts and see how far um, off the inserts you want to go with your tab. I kind of judge this by by look. Um, I've been kind of making these for a while. So I would say if this is your first time doing that, make sure that you have your ruler and you're looking at your planner. From here, we're just going to continue and do the same thing. I'm just going to select the heart. I'm going to hold shift and we're going to highlight both of those. We're going to hit, we're going to right click it and weld. There's our second tab and we're just going to continue on down. Not gonna lie, these kind of look like little butts, but hey, weld. And we're down to the last one and we're going to weld. All right, so we've got all of these. What we're gonna do here is now select all of them. We are going to hit the center all tool, which is gonna bring all of them together. Now we're gonna move in and if you hadn't already, you know, done this, um, we would do the same thing in here. Um, you would take this, you would size this correctly and erase and then weld these together as one point. Um, I will show that instead of just kind of taking the simple route and just taking unwelding these or not unwelding, ungrouping these and just copying and pasting. So from here, actually, that's not going to give me the right thing. So I'm going to actually left align. All right. So um, going back in here, as I said, I like to zoom in a little bit closer 
to the design when I am working through it. We are going to resize down here, making sure we're not getting these edges here uh, too close to the design. Um, yeah, that's where I'm gonna leave it, that's fine. We're gonna line them center. And I'm gonna zoom in a little bit closer just so I can erase a little bit better. And so you're just going to erase the overhang together. I kind of wish, I wish I could remember how these would just automatically join. I think they have to be an entire layer already. And then they just connect, but whatever. This is the easiest way for me um, when I'm doing it, just so I remember all my steps. See, look, as you can see here, I, ah, too close. Um, as you can see here, I accidentally cut too far in. What you just want to do is control Z, control Z, control Z, control Z, control Z. It's just going to keep taking me back until I get to that step. Um, normally I wouldn't have zoomed in. See, look, I did it again. I'm going to zoom in just a smidge more so that I don't keep making this mistake. And we're just going to go in and erase these lines. If you can't do them on a single, see, look, I got too close. What is this today? Sometimes if I get too close, it like does like an over. Oh my goodness. There. All right. Like close enough. Cool. All right. We're going to zoom back out again. Make sure that you select your select tool again. You're going to take all of these, select them all, control G. You're going to group them back together. So minimize some more. We're going to move back to the center of our canvas and we are going to place it here. Now you want to make sure this is center again. So what you're going to do is select all of these. And so if you hit center, it's going to center it now with these tabs. So my workaround, I gotta remember how I did this last time, was select, select, no, middle. All right, so is to select all and then align through the center alignment, not the top alignment, not vertical center alignment, horizontal center. So now you're back to being center, but we need six copies. So we're going to one, two, three, four, five, six. Select all of these. These will all go back to the same. Select all of these. Center. I'm horrible at this because I actually like eyeball this half the time. Uh -huh. I did this quick the last time and I like should have remembered. All right. That looks about right. For tutorial purposes, it works. All right. So what you're going to do again is like we did with the welding of the sides. We're going to select the first one, shift click the outside and control G. We're going to group that together. So look, we've got a full divider and then you're just going to go down the sides again, control G second, select shift, control G number three, select shift, control G gives us number three control actually not control click shift click control G or whatever the Mac equivalent is, which is the Mac fancy symbol. And this one, since it's the last one, I'm just going to highlight it all control G. So here are all your dividers. Super simple. And I'm just going to go put them all together. And they're good. And then this would be like the front or you could create and like write some words in the center of this. You know, it's your choice. Um, 
So that's essentially it. Um, it's how I made my Kingdom Hearts. It's how I made the Sun and Moons. Um, let's see. It's how I made my Ky it's how I made my Kylo Ren. This was the first order symbol, and basically I took it into Photoshop. I highlighted half of the symbol found a nice half spot and then I deleted the top thus making this half symbol which makes great dividers which I will show here in a little bit and then you pretty much just like center it up shift center and add it in so that's the technical side of everything what you'll do is you'll end up taking it um figuring out you know how many you need uh for how many you can fit in a sheet I think I've done like three per 12 by 12 um 12 by 12 side sheet of vinyl and like these I just rotate so I can use the most space I just make sure that when I'm putting it in depending on where I'm putting it um there's like no overlap because I'm just gonna like weed through everything here and go from there so that's the technical side of things um I will pull it into the next I'll have to film everything by hand now and kind of show you the next process of putting together the finished product for the Alrighty, so this is going to be the kind of hands-on portion of the tutorial where I kind of explain um, the next steps after you've designed, you set your cut lines and silhouette and you're ready to actually make the product. So you're gonna need at least three items um, for the actual vinyl cutting parts. You're gonna need some lamination pouches. Um, I would say your sweet spot's gonna be five mil, so you're gonna need however many sheets of lamination um, to laminate whatever side. Let's see, um, I know for your larger sizes like the A5 Cloud, you will need one uh, divider per sheet things like a six or anything like that you can typically get like two um in this sheet here and then you know laminate so you need a lamination pouch you need your choice of vinyl this is probably one of my favorite go-to choices which is the Cricut um opal it's got like a nice blue shift and then what you're also going to need is some transfer tape um make sure you're not getting like a strong transfer tape because a lot of these um, vinyls, especially like the foil style vinyls, are really delicate. So you want something that has like a medium to a soft transfer. You can also use contact paper. I just haven't used it in a while because I've been finding that the Cricut transfer tape, while it is a little bit more expensive, um, has been working out really nice. So those are the items that you need. Basically, you weed the design, um, remove the pieces that aren't going to be... Um, which I'll actually show you here. Um, basically, this will be like all cut out on like your vinyl sheet. Um, you weed it, you remove like the pieces here and here and everything else around it. So then you just have this. You cut the transfer tape to size, remove it, place it on top of the vinyl, get it all stuck, and then you stick that vinyl inside your lamination pouch and then you laminate it and you get something like this. So as you can see, this is just the back. Um, this is a page marker the hair out of there um so this is just a today page marker that you can like slide into whatever notebook you're using um i use ring bound ones so i punch holes so let me show you some examples of kind of ones that i've already made so far i made as you saw earlier that i talked about my kylo ren this is in my personal print impressions these are work notes haha -ha. Um, so I made six tabs for here. So using this like really nice red sparkly vinyl, we've got that one. This one has Kylo Ren here. Um, probably my favorite page um, with uh, Ben Solo's outline. I did this one that says Supreme Leader, done kind of in the Supreme font, as you can see here. Um, this one just says Star Wars. And then the last one is like his face. And as I said before, the cool thing about these like outlined designs is that you can see like these really cool um, uh, vellum, printed vellum and stuff inside. So I designed all of that. 
The other one that a lot of people have seen me use is in, I've been posting a lot because I'm like very proud of this one, um, is my A5 Wide or Estelle with the Kingdom Hearts theme. I'm still working on setting it up. Um, I just purchased some really cool Kingdom Hearts stickers from Redbubble that I'm gonna like decorate the pockets and you know, I gotta work on charms and everything. But so far I like made this outline here featuring this really cute Kingdom Hearts themed banner that I designed, um, a vellum featuring Sora that I made in Photoshop, and then um, this kind of bookmark that I kind of played around with and made as well. Um, I do have a matching second one in the back that I was gonna use as a page lifter, but um, I found out that five mil isn't really that thick and not that really great for page lifting, but I had this miss, uh, sized cover that I had made and I was like, oh, hey, I'll just punch it and have it fit so nothing sits. Um, let's see, I think I made recently for someone which I had to remake because I accidentally made them too small is these Harry Potter themed. So if you have a standard, yeah, a standard size traveler's notebook um, and you like want some cool ass dividers, um, yeah, so this is like the Hufflepuff and Ravenclaw, Slytherin, and Gryffindor. They all these really cute little like, I uh, designed this in Photoshop and then I um, put it all together. So when you put them together, as I said, you want to make sure that you're spacing everything. Um, everything has sits out here. So that's essentially like the quick easy way to do it. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Um, I'll be working on more tutorials and I'll do some planner flips. So I hope that helped um, you make your own really cool, you know, whether they're for your traveler's notebook or your ring bound planners. Um, this is a cute little bookmark I made for my personal planner if I move back into it. Um, I have a pink one. Um, I hope that helps kind of take the difficulty out of how to make these because they're really simple and they're quick um, once you have everything designed. Thanks!